G'day guys, welcome to Motorfuels. I'm Rob Hamilton, and today's episode I'm gonna share with you guys five essentials to get you started on what to pack for your motorcycle camping trip. Let's do this. I just recently came off a 14 day, 5,000 kilometer tour around New South Wales, which was absolutely insane. For the newcomers, thank you so much for stopping by. If you wanna check out this series, I'll link it right here. Go and check it out, I urge you. It was a damn amazing time. Scenery, camping, landscape, troubles with our bikes. We had it all, it was sick. Also in this episode, we'll just be covering the basics on what to bring with you when you wanna go moto camping. I'll be covering what to wear and the cooking sort of stuff and all the motorbike touring needs in future episodes as well. So make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any of that damn delicious goodness. Okay, so essential item number one being your luggage system. What do you plan on taking? How do you plan on getting your stuff on your bike? You're not going to be carrying a backpack the whole time. If you do that, you're going to have a sore back. You might be fortunate enough to have a nice big adventure bike with panniers and everything like that. If that's the case, then you are sorted, my friend. This could be your very first motor adventure. You don't want to spend too much money on all this crazy gear. Maybe your bike's not even suitable for it, which was the same case for me. This is my very first motor adventure as well. So the best option I came across was to get a set of dry packs. Now I had USA dry packs reach out. They send out a few of their dry packs to us. And these things, guys, these things were so, so sick. If you're getting started, this is the this is the way to go. And I'll show you why. Just come stock with the street scramblers, this little plate here. Throw that on there, boom. So you just like loop it around your stuff wherever you want, wherever you can. Click like there. There, then you pull down on all your straps, get it all nice and tight. That is on, baby. You can crack these little air valves here as well. Little full-on air valve release system, so you can compress it right down as much as you can. I usually use it, like leave these unlocked just before we leave, just to make sure you get all the air out as much as you can. There it is. Now, we've got the 25 litres, that's the 40 litre. 25 litre, Oosh. And then you load these guys up, just easy as man. And now these bags have been through absolute hell, man. You can sort of see all the battle marks and everything. 5,000 kilometers, 14 days, but I assure you everything inside these still stay 100% dry and dust free. This is my tent, nothing crazy. It's just a two man hiking tent that costs 120 bucks from a cheap camping store. It comes with its own little dry bag, which is awesome. So you can just strap it to your bike if you don't want to put it in another dry bag. Weighs two and a half kilos, and like this thing is quite short. What does it come up to? It comes up to it comes up to just under 60 centimeters in length and about 15 centimeters wide. So it's pretty damn small and pretty damn cozy. Now, of course, this was a budget one. This is a budget tent. The lining isn't that thick or anything like that, which is fine for us just because it was summer. If you go into the colder climates, I urge you guys to maybe spend some more money and get a better, thicker, more suitable tent. Otherwise, you'll freeze to death. We don't want that. We don't want you to freeze to death and also to get a two-man. There's like, there's like ample space for activities. You can sit here, you can do like working on a Mac, put that down, stuff all the stuff. Have really nice cozy sleeves. Oh, like this. If you get a single man, you're gonna have all your helmet and your boots and all your gear just sort of all crammed up. It's sort of cozy as is, but it is it is enough. You don't want to go three-man. I feel like I'll just start getting too big then, too bulky, and it's just unnecessary. But this thing was cool. I really enjoyed it. It was just, you know, easy to pack up, easy to pack down. Chuck it in your bag, just forget about it, done. Zoom. This one in particular is from Danelli as well. Again, not sponsored. This is the Camper Comfort. This is 80 bucks. So combine this with the tent, 200 bucks, and boom, you're camping. This thing is also in its own little dry pack, which is awesome. Now it's one of those ones where you just crack the valve here, let it sit for about half an hour. That'll just inflate. You just lock that back up and then boom, you're in comfort zone. This was great for me, my size, about 75 kilos, five foot 10. For Nick, it wasn't so great. How did you find the mat? It needs to be bigger. Ah, uh, it needs to be bigger. But it's one. just like, for what it was, yeah, it was nice. But I mean, like, again, there are a whole bunch of these hiking mats that you can choose from. Go into your camping store, literally just lay them out on the ground like what we did, and um, just, just test them out. You have to test, you have to try this stuff before you buy. Not bad. You gotta test them out. This is small, it's light, and it fits perfectly inside of the USA dry pack, so it was a no brainer. Did anybody else notice that I left the door open? 
I went and got the tape measure and I left the door open. Ah, silly boy, Rob, silly boy. This is the sleeping bag that I use. It's called the Palmy Compact Sleeping Bag by Roman. Uh, and I didn't call it Palmy for no reason. Like, look at this thing. It's damn tiny, man. How good is that? It's so sick to pack down. I've had this thing for a few years and it's, uh, I love it, it's so good. I guess the only downside is that it's a plus 10 degrees Celsius bag, meaning that if you're in the cooler climates, this thing will not keep you as warm as you'd like to be. I've used it a couple of nights in winter, and yeah, I do get pretty damn cold, which is why I bought this little guy here, and this is a liner. So you chuck this inside and you get all snuggled up and get pretty cozy. This was around like 120 bucks, and then this was $60. But again, there are so many different styles of sleeping bags and all that, this is just what I have, and I like it, and it's, um, it's very nice. So yes, thank you. Ah, oh, and also, this is my this is my pillow. This is two dollars from a camping store. Um, literally, you just blow it up and boom, you have a pillow. Sometimes I do use my feather down as a pillow, like once it's all compacted up. So that's a cool little thing to have with you. Obviously, when you're freezing cold, chuck that on and you'll be heaps warm. Um, but yeah, it makes a mad little pillow. Now you can go pretty crazy with all your gadget tech. You can go to the shops and just buy damn everything. There's so many things to buy. So many things, but I feel like the the things that I use most when camping and couldn't live without would be these things that I just have right here. Number one being the head torch. This is a black diamond head torch. It's got like high and low beam. It's got like an infrared thing so you don't blind other people. I think it's such an essential piece of gear so you can just be hands free. You're looking around everywhere. You can see what you're doing in the dark. You can just, you can see, which is so handy. I also have this here lamp. This is a very, very cheapy LED lamp. Um, so it's got like a little bottom boy here, so you can just set this up in your tent and um, have a have a normal sort of light source. It comes in very handy. I also have a knife. This one's called a Gerber. It's like 60 bucks um, for obvious reasons. You want to cut stuff. This multi-tool. This is $30. Again, from your sort of cheap store. I guess it reflects its build quality. Ah, there we go. Um, but it works, man. Look at that. Woo! You got a little saw in there, you got a bottle opener, you got all your, you know, all your multi-tool stuff. Battery pack, so you wanna, you just wanna have one of these in your bag. They're like, you can pick them up for like $20 if you don't have one already, get one, I urge you. Obviously, charge your phone, charge all your stuff, and for that, you need your cables. So I take a little sack, my essential cables here. I have USB-C, I have micro USB, I've got, you know, iPhone, and you know, all the things that you just sort of need, I have in this sack all the time. Well, there it is, guys. Five essentials to get you started on what to pack for a motorcycle camping trip. Now, again, this is just the stuff that I use for our moto trip and it got us by for 14 days. So I feel like if you're going for a little shorter trip that this, just having what I just mentioned there for your camping needs, will get you through so fine. As I mentioned earlier, I have a few more episodes coming out focusing on the cooking essentials, the gear essentials for what you need to wear, and also your moto essentials for if you're going for a longer tour. Just what we bought and what got us through. So make sure you like and subscribe to the channel if you don't want to miss out on that. And um, let's end this episode with a little Q&A. Tishman Wobbin, I hope I pronounced that right. Apologies if I didn't. Maybe something about the cost and things you were not prepared for. So yeah, it's better to take a bit of extra money with you just in case things happen, like what happened to me where my bike died. Uh, we had to stay an extra few nights at the accommodation and I had to buy some tools and I bought more gear as well while I was on the road. So extra money is always a good thing to have with you when going on a massive motorbike tour. Phil Barrow, what a trip. Two questions. What did you change your sprocket ratios to and how was it and how did the dark windscreen go? So the sprocket ratio, I went from a 41, which is stock, down to a 37, which improved fuel economy. And it took the edge off the top end of the rev range, which was nice, by about 500 revs. I reckon it was a damn good move by me. Also, the dark windscreen was sick. Deflected all the wind off my chest, over, over my head. Sometimes I got down and right behind the windscreen just to save and a bit of, you know, fatigue there. Neck on. Ah, ah. Caffeine and gasoline, if you could do it all over again and you had your pick up any bike, what would you choose? I'd probably choose like a Tenere 700 or an Africa Twin or something like that. Something a bit more just suitable for the conditions that we're riding in. Pritz Pratz, what are the three things you would have done different, including planning, route, gear, etc.? This is gonna be all covered in another episode. It's gonna be five things, uh, so make sure you subscribe and keep tuned and subscribe. Bonita, if you would go back in time and give yourself advice before the trip, what would that be? To heed the damn warning signs, man. If the sign says don't go down this road when it's wet, don't go down the damn road. Simples. Mr. Berlin, what was the best part of the whole trip? When my bike was repaired and the boys were back on after thinking that the tour was gonna be over within six days. Yeah! Damn.
Boom! That was the best part. Erkin.gkc, anything new you have learnt about camping on this trip, if not any tips? So this is just camping, not riding. Our water situation on the second last day of the trip was pretty hectic. We lost two of our water bottles and we only had two left and it was so, so hot. So it would have been nice to have one of those straw things that get rid of 99% of the bacteria and germs out of the lake water. Or maybe like a packet of those neutralizing tablets. So you can just fill your bottle up of any source of water, put one of those in there, drink it, and you're sort of all good. Chef Lily, what is it that you wish you knew before you went on a journey that the damn shift shaft snaps so easily if you just drop the bike on one side? Did you break your gear lever? And to get or fit a foldable shift lever so that when that happens, it doesn't snap on the internals. You don't have to pull the whole bike apart. And you don't have to. Also, how many times did you crap your pants while riding? It, not a day went by, man, that we didn't crap our pants. Holy crap, it was just crap after crap after crap. Thank you so much for writing, guys. That was fun. Um, sorry if I didn't get around to answering your question. There were so many of them. But drop a line if you want me to answer your question for next week's video. Like a little one-on-one -on -one like this. It's a good time. All right, guys. Ride safe. And uh, I'll see you in next week's video. Peace.